start off asking this question. What is a behavior that you would like your loved one to either decrease or increase? We're going to talk tonight specifically about how to change behavior and create lasting behavior change. So what are we going to cover tonight? I don't know why I did that. I'm going to review, for those of you that are at the first class, I, I, we talked about what ABA is and some fundamentals. I'm going to be kind of a broken record. We keep doing this. You're going to hear me review this over and over again. Trust me, I'm only going to do it if it's important. So we're going to review a couple of very important things that we talked about first class, and we're really going to use those tonight to make the plans. And then what we're going to, and then we're going to watch the same video that we watched again, like the video, because we're really going to look at how to create those new pathways in the brain. And then I'm going to give some examples, and then I'm going to really try to leave some time. I think we have a, a good enough group here that everybody gets to leave tonight with a plan, at least a semblance of a plan. So I want you to leave with something of value. Mm -hmm. okay. All right, let's watch the video, and I'm going to pause it at certain points. Those of you that were here the first time are going to remember this video. Not so long ago, many scientists believed that the brain did not change after childhood, that it was hardwired and fixed by the time we became adults. But recent advances in only the last decade now tell us that this is simply not true. The brain can and does change throughout our lives. It is adaptable, like plastic. Hence, neuroscientists call this neuroplasticity. How does neuroplasticity work? If you think of your brain as a dynamic, connected power grid, there are billions of pathways or roads lighting up every time you think, feel, or do something. Some of these roads are well-traveled. These are our habits, our established ways of thinking, feeling, and doing. Every time we think in a certain way, practice a particular task, or feel a specific emotion, we strengthen this road. It becomes easier for our brains to travel this pathway. Okay, I'm gonna pause it there. So the behaviors that we want to decrease, those are already embedded. That's this pathway right here, okay? What I really love about this video is you see how that's thicker than this other pathway, right? So as the brain makes those connections over and over and over again, it becomes easier and easier to walk down the path. I think I probably gave my analogy about the, the hiking path in the woods, first class. So the more you walk down the path, the easier it is to just keep walking down that path each time, and the less likely you are to kind of go over here and bushwhack your way through the woods, right? So you get that, what we wanna do is we wanna flip that around to our advantage. So if it's a behavior that I wanna decrease, that probably means that I don't want my loved one to continue to walk down this path, okay? So this is what we're going to change, and then I'm going to keep playing this video because it does a nice job of talking about what we want to do. Say we think about something differently, learn a new task or choose a different emotion. We start carving out a new road. If we keep travelling that road, our brains begin to use this pathway more and this new way of thinking, feeling or doing becomes second nature. The old pathway gets used less and less and weakens. This process of rewiring your brain by forming new connections and weakening old ones is neuroplasticity in action. So this is what we're going to talk about tonight. Coming up with a plan to shrink this old behavior, this old pathway, and then grow this new pathway. Okay? Because if I want to decrease a behavior, I can't just, if all I do is decrease it and I don't create a new path, then that behavior is going to come back at some point. The other thing too is even when I create this new path, this one right here, this old behavior is still hanging around over here. But if I build this up thick enough, it essentially covers on top of it, right? And that one will take over. So if I want to, what was, what was one of our goals? Was less fixated on things, right? 
that would have been this one over here. That's the current path, right? That it's, it's your son, right? Yes. That, that your son has built in. We're going to talk today, tonight, about how we build this other path. Because once you know how the paths are built, you can come up with a plan to build your own. All right? And that's where we look at some kind of practical strategies to be able to do that. I'm going to keep playing this through. The good news is that we all have the ability to learn and change by rewiring our brains. If you have ever changed a bad habit or thought about something differently, you have carved a new pathway in your brain and experienced neuroplasticity firsthand. With repeated and directed attention towards your desired change, you can rewire your brain. How many people have changed a habit before? Yeah? Okay, a couple hands, right? Was it easy or hard? Hard. To change the habit. What do you think, Lisa? Was it easy or hard? Hopefully it was hard. Yeah. But after I had my stroke, I kind of forgot I was a smoker. So then it became easy. Oh, oh okay. That's interesting. All right. Okay. Right. And then you never and then I, you didn't smoke again. And then smoke. Yeah. Okay. That's interesting. How about, how about other people changing a habit? In, or even in general? Is it easy or hard? It's, it's difficult. You have to be conscious about it. You have to think that you sort of do it differently. Set reminders on your phone. Exactly. <laughs> Set, exactly. Setting reminders on your phone. Yeah. Well, I like to think of, I like to use the word habit instead of behavior because it just makes a little bit more sense when we think about it that way. And I think we can relate it to ourselves in knowing how hard it is to change a habit. And that's what happened in this, this video is kind of fast forwarding a lot, you know, and just saying, oh, I think about something differently and I can rewire my brain. I mean, that's true. But it's not that simple. So when we come up with the plans tonight and we talk about them, understand and know if I could just give you a quick thing to do and you could go home and do it right now, I would do it. Trust me. Like I said this morning, sorry, Lisa, you're hearing this presentation two times. At least we have this morning. You know, um, I would give that to you. And if you find it out, please tell me. But it's hard. It's hard to do. It's hard to do. But when we talk about these fundamentals and we know how the paths are created, it gives us a chance to be able to do that. Okay? All right. Questions about this? Are we feeling okay here? This is a little bit of a review. We're feeling all right? Pathway, pathways in the brain? Kind of cool, right? You get to rewire brains. I don't have to question. Kind of fun. Yes? And it's, it, I mean, it, it's, it's the same, it's difficult for decrease or increase is like the same is which one is more easy uh, uh, oh as far as increasing or decreasing yeah, if it, like that's a, like if okay i want my baby for example mm -hmm. i want my baby right now he talks to me more about he is doing right okay and I, how, how he's feeling or what he's doing yeah, how he's feeling and how okay. he's doing both. Okay. Right? Yep, all right, both. Yep. So that I want to increase that, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I want to decrease when he's screaming or yelling at me. So my question is, is the same hard uh, job for, you know, like that? Yeah. Like which one's more difficult? Yes. Which one has the best Thank chance of, 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 of working? Yes. It's an excellent question. Yeah. So the question just because we're and we're videoing too is is what what is what is more difficult is it more difficult remember this was the old road here is it more difficult to shrink this or to grow this couple answers so the first one is the the thicker this road the harder it will be to change right essentially the more the behavior has been and we're going to go into that q routine reward the more that's happened over and over again, the less, the less the brain wants to change. The more grooved in the pattern is, the harder it will be to switch, okay? So that's, that's, that's the chance of decrease. The chance of increase is gonna come back to, we're gonna talk about our scale right here. The chance of increasing is gonna depend a lot on this. So let me actually, I'm gonna segue that to, because to, we're gonna talk about that next year. 
those of you remember from the last class, I know some people here are new. When, when your brain is making a decision about what pass it's going to go down, it essentially does a very quick calculation that we talked about last time. And that's where I use my, my highly technical scale that I have right here. This is some really high tech stuff. Okay? So just be ready. And what my brain is saying is what is the amount of reward that I think I'm going to get? Okay? So I start there. So let's say I think I'm going to get a five reward. My brain then says, how much effort do I need to put in in order to get that five reward? If I have to put in an eight effort, is my brain likely to do it? No. If I'm only going to get a five reward and the effort outweighs the reward, my brain is not likely to do it. That works out really well for us, by the way. It's kind of a genius way to do it, you know? Sometimes it's, but like in general, this is really good. If my brain did the other way, we probably wouldn't have gotten that far. So this works out pretty good for us. Now the other piece, that latency, all that means is if the reward isn't going to come immediately and it's going to come at some point in the future, I essentially have to subtract from the power of the reward. So I think in the, I, I usually give the marathon example. So if, if, if I say, okay, I want you guys to, to run a marathon, so we'll say that maybe that's an eight effort for you, or uh, sorry, it's a, we'll, still, we'll stay here with the five reward, and it's an eight effort, actually, that works out pretty good, all right? And then I say, okay, um, so that's not enough reward. Um, I'll give you $10,000 to run that marathon. Ooh, I just upped the reward quite a, quite a bit, right? So maybe then I go over here to 10, and all right, I got you. You're going to run the marathon, right? But then if I say, oh, but you know what, that 10 grand, I don't have it today. It's going to be paid at the age 65 in an annuity in monthly installments. What just happened to that reward? What just happened to that when it was going to be way in the future? Way down. Way down. Maybe even less than the five, right? Way down, and then the brain's not going to do it. So as we come up with the plans, it's going to be important to not only think about the reward and the effort, right? But we have to think about how quickly we're going to be able to give the reward. Okay? And then I'm coming back to your question. So if I'm going to look to teach something new, like, like your son commenting about what he's doing or how he's feeling, I need to work out my equation. Right? And I really, I've got like two levers to move here. I need to make it as low effort as possible. If it's something I want to have happen, the perfect equation is this. Super low effort, a ton of reward. If, the bra if your brain is presented with this equation, you're going to do it almost every single time. Okay? Right? Yes. And then if I go the other way, though, and I ask for a ton of effort, and I'm only going to give a small amount of reward, then it would be really difficult mm -hmm. to build that new one. Questions about that? That's one like from the first class. It's like, oh wow, it's not. It doesn't sound that difficult, but trust me, once we kind of come up with the plans, it can be a, a, a little bit challenging. All right. My second fundamental that we're going to talk about a lot today is the Q routine reward. So this is how the brain really grooves in that pattern and those pathways. It looks first for a Q. Or another way to think of this is a signal that tells me that I'm able to engage in a routine or for art, we might say a habit, and then I can get a reward. If that happens, if I see the signal, I engage in the habit, and then I get a reward, my brain says, ooh, that was good. The next time you see that signal again, do that same habit or that same routine so I can get the same reward. And then over and over and over and over and over again. And that's how that path gets created. This is another genius design, <laughs> right? Because especially the signal part. Imagine if we all just acted randomly, doing random things and random behaviors. 
in search of a reward. We also wouldn't have got that far doing that. So there has to be some sort of signal or cue that says, it's time to participate more. It's time to comment with my mom a little bit more about what I'm doing, right? It's time to greet someone. It's time to, we're going to pick something age appropriate for your son to do, right? We have to teach the signal. And then the routine or the habit is going to be the thing that we actually want to have happen. But we've got to have some form of a reward. If there's no reward, if the brain goes signal and engages in a habit, and then it doesn't get a reward, is it going to walk down that path again? Probably not. Probably not. Unless it's walked down the path before, and then it might say, okay, maybe I'll try this a couple of more times. But especially if I'm teaching something new that, that a learner doesn't already know, and I don't have any reward on the other side, mm -hmm. then my equation's way off. You know? Because if it's something new, all the things we're going to talk about tonight are going to require some form of effort because they're going to be new. Every time I do something new, it's going to be more effort. Right? We all know that from trying some things new ourselves. You know? I think I, you know, we talked last time about driving a car. How, was that really easy for, for everyone in here the first time you did it? No. No. You were super nervous the first time you drove a car. Now, though, you get in and drive the car, you don't feel that nervous because you've already created the pathways. They're already there. It's a low effort response for you. Okay? So we're going to take advantage of this. Now, I'm going to talk about types of reward. I did not talk about this in the first class, but I think this is going to be important that we talk about different types of reward. So the first type that I'm going to talk about is what we call sensory or automatic reinforcement. What this means is that that reward at the end of that path, after the cue and the routine, the reward is something that is just, it's just in, intrinsic inside me. I don't need anyone else to provide the reward for me. Okay? It's something intrinsic inside of me that is reinforced, that is the reward that I am looking for. Okay? Think about it like I would do it even if no one else was here. I wouldn't need anyone else here. Okay? So I'm giving this presentation right now. I'm engaging in behaviors. If you all weren't here, it's probably pretty unlikely that I would sit in an empty room, hopefully, and <laughs> make all these hand movements and give this whole presentation. Who knows? Maybe I'd do it. If I did do that, so here's an interesting example. If I did do that, then it would be an automatically reinforced behavior because I must just like hearing myself talk. <laughs> okay? Hopefully that's not the case. <laughs> but that would be, a, you know, a, a sensor. Um, yeah. So basically, yes. is like what you're talking about is cause and effect. Correct. Correct. And in, 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 in this context here. So, so does that make sense? Inside mm -hmm. me? Okay. The next one mm -hmm. is escape. So this can sometimes make sense, but it can be a little bit tricky. So the reward on the other side doesn't always have to be getting something. It can also be getting away from something that I don't want. My brain likes both of those things. It likes to get stuff, but it also likes to get away from stuff that it doesn't want. Okay? Hold on. My third one notes. is attention. Alicia, sorry. So attention would be just someone attending to me. Okay? It could be in the form of negative attention, right? Tim, don't do that. It could be positive. Tim, great job. It could be neutral. Right? It's just attention is just someone attending to me after that cue and that habit and that reward. So I see a signal, I engage in a behavior, I might get attention. And that could be a reward. Thank you. Okay? And my last one here is tangible. This spells seat. So we love this in ABA, our, our seat. All right? Tangible or access. This is essentially the opposite of escape. So this is getting something. I want to get something. It doesn't have to be tangible. It could be tangible, but it doesn't have to be something that you actually touch. I could also be looking to get control on my environment or receive your approval. I could be looking to get that. So it doesn't have to be something that I can touch, but I'm looking to get. So these two are essentially the inverse. 
This would be, I would do it even if there was no one else around. Okay, and then attention's pretty straightforward, but it doesn't have to be positive attention, right? Or something like, yay, hey, good job. That would be attention, okay? But it doesn't have to be that. It could also be, hey, don't do that. Okay? These are the four buckets that we'll look at tonight and that we'll talk about when we're thinking about changing behavior. One thing that's tricky, and this will probably come up tonight when we're coming up with plans, is that I don't get to choose what is reward for someone else. I don't get to define that. But the problem is I only live in one brain. <laughs> so I know what's reward for me, but if my daughter hits my son and I say, hey, we don't do that in this house. You go to time out right now, young lady. That is unacceptable behavior right over there. And she cries and says, this is mean. I don't ever want to go in time out ever again. But then the very next day, she hits her brother again and goes in time out again and then does it the day after that and then two days after that and after that. This time out and this reprimand I'm giving, is it a reward or a punishment? Reward. It's a reward. It's crazy, right? No, it really truly is because it's defined by her, not by me. I'm defining it as a punishment. I'm attempting to stop that behavior from happening, right? I'm setting the rules and the limits in my house. But if that behavior continues, what's happening, I'll back this up just a little bit, is this is what's happening. In that scenario, mm. cue, routine, reward. If the cue, routine, and then if punishment happens instead of the reward, what happens with that behavior? Does it continue or stop? If it comes in contact with punishment, it should, it, stop. It should, it should stop. It Actually, it will stop as long as it's really punishment. But this is what gets so hard is you have... Multiple people, everyone's different. We'll all agree with that, right? So people are going to react differently. I might give that same reprimand, that same timeout, that same consequence, right? And one of my daughters might never, ever do it ever again. And I'm like, parenting 101. Yeah. <laughs> Man, I just got that. I'm the best parent you've ever seen. And then I do it with my next daughter, right? And then she continues to do it. And then I continue to give the punishment and give the reprimand because it worked before, right? But, but if this happens and the behavior continues, then it has to be a reward. That's a hard one, right? That's a really difficult one. Plans about changing behavior, but I do think it's important. You have to prioritize. You can't say, well, I want to change everything. That's just like when we have the New Year's resolution and we say, I'm going to go to the gym seven days a week for three hours each day. <laughs> it's not going to happen. And we all know we've done it. We all know we've done that. Not going to happen. So I would recommend, you know, kind of a one, two, three, setting priorities. And I would do them a lot based on how, how is changing this behavior, either decreasing or increasing, going to increase the quality of life for this other person. So if it's the way I eat my burger, I would theorize that that might be down low on the list, unless unless it was presenting as a huge barrier to quality of life, which it might. Really Same good. thing with throwing a car in the air mm -hmm. and clapping my hands. If that is precluding your son from getting employment that he wants, then maybe that goes up on the list a little bit. But if it's know, not, the then I would bring it down here. But I think that would be way down here. It wouldn't even be on my list to change. It's not impeding you know, his that's life that's in any way. And, and it's actually assisting because if it's something that's common to him, then I, I would put that as you know a behavior that you know is something that you want to keep. But that's what you have to deal with almost like on a daily oh, basis hey. sure. with yeah. people you know, perceiving what they think is. Mm -hmm. You know, bad behavior. Yeah, that's right. So I want to keep going. Um, I'm going to do an example first. All right? I'm going to come up with an example first. So Lauren's going to hand this out, but I'll start up here on this slide. Current path. Current path. Q. Dad says, 
come sit down to do your homework. So that's the signal in this case. Oh, maybe I should do this one. I'm seeing a lot. Okay, this is the common one. All right. Child yells and throws all the items off the table while, while flipping the table on its side. Wow. Boy, that's, that's pretty good at that. Uh, dad provides child a break so he can calm down and de-escalate in a quiet room. Okay? So going back to the rewards, if you remember seat, which one of these, so the sensory, put it right up here. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Remember, I've got mm -hmm. my seat. Yeah. 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 Oh, mm -hmm. we already got it. Okay, escape. good. It's escape. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right? So when dad gives the break so that the child can calm down, he's getting the child exactly what he wants. Is escaping. Yeah. Now, I think we could make an argument getting a little bit of attention, maybe, too. Yeah. Right, but probably a pretty good amount of escape out of it. Okay? So, how do we change that? We need to, so for our old behavior, right? Remember, we talked a little bit about principles and procedures. You're going to come up with a procedure tonight for your own son or daughter, but you got to remember the principle too. So, the principle here is my old behavior needs to, I need to make it more effort. So, dad controls item in a secure area prior to asking child to complete the homework. That's going to increase the effort that's needed to tear up all my paper and flip the table. Right? I mean, you might not have to bolt it down, but if you could, <laughs> you know, or I'm going to control all the papers. Now, it's a little bit harder to trash my whole scene. Effort is up. I have increased effort level. Okay? Right? I'm also going to increase the latency. So now, the break is coming, but only after a minute. It's not coming immediately. Now, notice again what I didn't do here. And you could, but I'm not saying no breaks. You could do that. I'm not saying you can't. But if this break has been given for a long period of time, and then I come up and say, that's it. I went to a seminar last night. They said no breaks. We're not <laughs> doing it. What's going to happen? He's going to look at your desk. Yep, exactly. And that desk is going to be coming right at me. Right? So the break's still on the table. I've just increased the latency, which, as we talked about before, decreases the reward. And then I've also further decreased the reward by saying, instead of a 30-minute break that it used to be, it's only going to be five minutes now. Only five minutes. So you see my equation, right? Okay, I'm teetering. Teetering, and now I reduce the effort, or sorry, reduce the reward, and that's where I want it on my old behavior. Higher effort, lower reward. Mm. That's what I want on my old one. Okay? And this didn't pull the breakaway. Notice it didn't pull the breakaway. Right? If I pull the breakaway, then I would just, I mean, the reward would be tanked down here, but you'd also run that risk of having a desk thrown in your face, which is never fun. That makes sense? Come in here. Now my new path, because I don't want to stop there. New path. So my signal is the same, but now here's the routine that I want to teach. Here's the habit or the new behavior I want to teach. The child is prompted to either flip over a break card or verbally ask for a break. So I'm just giving examples. Some way to ask for that break without having to flip the desk. Okay? And I want it to be low effort, right? So maybe it's just flipping over a break card or saying I want a break. Whatever's going to be low effort I want to do because now I want to move this needle over here. I want my new behavior to be low effort, latency. I'm giving the break immediately when the break card is flipped. As soon as you flip that break card, oh, okay, great, we're taking a break. Nice job doing that. I've increased my reward and... You saved yourself from getting a car thrown at you. See that? <laughs> Always good. Everybody wins. Now, my reward system, what I put in here was after I established this thing with the break, right? And the child's asking for the break, asking for the break. What's the next question that's going to come up? What, what, what would you think is the next question that someone's going to say? After the desk stop getting flipped, what's the child going to do with the break card? Is he going to use it a lot or, a, or only a little bit? He's going to use it a lot. 
right? He's going to be like, okay, this is great. You, you set the equation. I love my new path, right? This is really wonderful. We're not flipping desks. That's excellent. And then you can work to fade the break card. But you can't just take it away. Because if you took away the break card, he's going to go right back to flipping desks. Mm -hmm. So this gives just a proposal of a way to slowly fade the break. So I say, look, I'm going to give you as many breaks as you would like. You've been doing a good job asking for breaks. But I'm going to give you a chance to, and I'm just putting 10 rewards, 7, 5. It would depend on who it is. And I'm going to say, if you need three or more breaks, then you're going to get a three reward. So something small. Okay? But if you can get away with only two breaks, I'm going to give you a five reward. If you can get away with only one break, I'm going to give you a seven reward. And ding, 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 winner, winner. If you don't need any breaks at all, you're going to get a ten reward. The beauty with a system like this is the child decides. Because newsflash, the child always decides. <laughs> okay? As all of you decide your own behaviors too. All right? So I'm just steering that in the direction that I want. Like just nudging that ship and saying, hey, if, it, if we could go over there, there's something really cool. Oh, but you're having kind of a tough night, you need all the breaks? No problem. Giving just a tangible sort of reward. We've had parents do something similar where the reward becomes, you know, if you, if you get through your homework without having to take any breaks, you get 10 minutes on your iPad yeah. versus oh. five minutes or three minutes or two minutes or, you know, you get to watch five YouTube videos versus three, two, one. Um, right. And that seems to be very reinforcing for me. Does that work for children yeah. over tw over three years old too? Because it's like my son is over, th is over three and it's like... Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yep. That's a good question. All of these fundamentals apply to all of us. Everybody in this room. This isn't just children with autism. This is everybody. If we all wanted to change a behavior or make a new habit or whatever it is, I would come right back to these same fundamentals. Same thing. I'm not going to always come in contact with the reward, right? So how does that eventually fade? I'll give kind of an example, and then I'll talk about the inner workings of how it does fade. So when we were all potty trained as kids, right? How many parents gave them a little reward? Yeah, me too, right? It, no, actually, you didn't get a reward. I got lifesavers. I got lifesavers, and orange was my favorite. Okay, but my mom doesn't give that to me anymore. But and, but and here's what happens. I can guarantee you can call her if you want to. I'm pretty sure she doesn't. Maybe she throw me on the bus. I don't know. But here's why. I'm gonna go right to the science to why. Okay, Ooh. when I'm being potty trained for the first time, and I'm gonna take these away. Is that a high effort response or a low effort the first time? that I have to go pot. It's a high effort. It's a high effort response, right? So I'm up here. And if I'm used to going in my diaper, then the reward is like, I'm just fine right now. Yeah. I go in my diaper, you change me, this arrangement works out really good for me. Yeah, so, but then again, you, know, you get tired of sitting and sitting there, ooky, ooky, ooky. Well, so that's right. So, so, so then, see, I'm gonna move it around there, Felicia. If I get tired of sitting in my you-know-what, <laughs> then then the reward of learning how to go on the potty increases. That's why some kids, my oldest daughter, she potty trained herself. And she just you walked right over and she went and she was done, right? For others, it's not that way. And so if I come in and I give a higher reward, like my mom giving me those lifesavers when I was a kid, right? I do that over and over and over again after I create the pathway it's no longer a high effort response. The pathway has been created. As the effort goes down, the reward can go down as well. And it eventually gets to a place where it can be faded altogether. So that can be a really hard thing because when you're watching individual discrete behaviors be taught with a super high amount of reward, it's hard to see like, what are we just gonna keep throwing M&Ms at the kid their entire life, just like an M&M for everything? I've got to give praise for everything, or I have to do this for everything. The good news is you don't. Because eventually, that pathway will get created. It will become a lower effort response, and then you can fade the reward. Right? 
So, does that make sense? Yeah, yeah. 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 And, it, and it connects to a, a recent example. So we are getting ABA okay. at home. Good. Yeah. And they are teaching him to point at things if he needs something. Okay. Mm -hmm. Right. But yep. right now he doesn't point at things that he needs. But mm -hmm. when we show him the things that he usually always love to have. Yeah. Like, okay, do you need this fire truck or this car? And he will, po he will point. Okay. And and that pointing is working when we show him those two things and it's always working and we're like okay yeah nice he's learning pointing but he's still not pointing at things when he needs other than when he's yeah. testing him to show us the toys yeah good example it's a um, you know so I do. how do you then move I it do. yeah so <laughs> I do. he's learning to point to the fire truck to get that fire truck mm -hmm. and okay if he is working there but then how do I transition that to use that pointing to other things in the world to... Can I just give an example as a parent yeah. with no ABA background? Mm -hmm. That, take it to getting his own food, put a high five in your fridge because now he's going to go high five in the fridge when he's hungry. Like that, you're in step one, it gets so easy. <laughs> like, but it's every single yeah. day, you're like, yep, oh, low reward, but tomorrow... I'm here because I'm running out of rewards, like mm -hmm. the next reward, the next reward, yeah. you know, just because like you're saying, like, it, it's going to, it just, it clicks. Now he knows. So now he's going to know forever. So you're there, which is like, woo! <laughs> yeah. mm -hmm. Just want to say that because it's like, oh, it gets tingly to yeah. see you're at like step yeah. one. What does he do right now when he wants the cookie? Um, so we kind of have to keep it outside on the dining table. Okay. And then he would, if, so that if he sees it, mm -hmm. he would say cookie, cookie. He would say cookie. So if he so if he sees it outside, yeah. he doesn't need to point. He'll say cookie. Yes. And then you'll go and get the cookie. Yeah. Okay. All right. That's see, that's I'm sorry, but that's what my son does. What Deshaun does, he'll say like cookie, or he'll say muffin, like honey bun. He can't he can't say honey bun, but he'll say muffin. Yep. Right. Because mm -hmm. it's a, well, then that's a lower effort kind of response than saying the whole thing. Yeah. So what I would look at there then is, I would almost kind of wonder what if the target should be pointing. Or if he's able to say cookie, because what you could do if you have if you have it out on the table, right? And he sees and he says cookie and then gets the cookie. If you move, so tell me this: if you move it out of sight, though, he's not going to say cookie. He's no, he, he doesn't remember that. He, he doesn't remember where that is. Yeah. Will he take your hand and pull you toward the cabinet to go and get it? Yes, he will. He will. Okay. Uh, most of the times he wouldn't say that he needs something if he's hungry or anything like that. Yeah. But sometimes he would try to drag us to, to places and things where we would not understand what he wants. You, sometimes right. he, one of those times could be a cookie. But we, could be a cookie. He would not say it. And then when you go to that place, are you like opening up and you're like, what do you want? What right. do you want? And he would not point or something and he doesn't have words for everything. So right. cookie, he has a word for that. But right. other things he, he, he would not point and he cannot say. So it's... And he's not, okay, so I do like pointing that. I'm back to liking pointing. <laughs> I'm back to liking pointing as the target because he doesn't have a word for everything. So, so then let's look at a cue and a routine. So I would start with the cookie out on the table, right, so that he knows where the cookies are. He asks for a cookie. Now, now you know he's motivated, right? But instead of giving the cookie, I would put the cookie, so you could even just hide it. You don't have to put it in the cabinet, right? I would take that cookie out of sight. His brain is then going to be thinking, how do I get that cookie, right? And then I would give him a prompt to point. To how to remove that? Because yeah. he also says point. Yeah. When he's pointing, right. he's like, point, point. point. So I don't yeah. know if oh. I'm teaching him real life yeah. thing or it's something right. that's oh, because like, he's connecting those two things together. Yeah. But what I think you could do, when he, when he says the point or they're using that verbal prompt, you can fade that over time. You can fade that prompt over time too, you know? So I wouldn't be super concerned that he's saying point mm -hmm. for now, for now. I would start with him kind of making that selection and then pointing over to the cookie. So I would give that same prompt that they're giving, right? You know, if they say point, I would say point and then help him point. And then the key here is that that makes it a little bit of a lower effort response because he already knows that response. He already knows that prompt. And then the latency is going to be low because you're going to give the cookie right away. And then the reward is going to be high because he's going to get the cookie, right? So I would set that up. And then you're almost setting up the cue. You're setting up the signal to kind of transfer from him saying it's not just at the table. You can get cookies by pointing too. And then if you have other, are there other things that he likes too? 
Not too many. Not too many. So start with the cookie. Start with the cookie because, and this is one thing that we talked about this morning when we were in, in, in planning. One thing that happens sometimes, and pointing is actually kind of a good example of this. We call it a pivotal skill where it leads to other things happening. So if I learn that I can point and I can get things, right? I might start pointing at things that you didn't even know that I liked, right? I might even just start pointing and saying, I wonder what's in that cabinet right over there, <laughs> right? Why don't you open up this cabinet right here, but then you find other things that he likes, right? So it can lead to other things. So I, li I like pointing, because then I think you can find, you know, right now he likes the cookies, right? But maybe you start finding some other things that he's pointing to, and those could be your next targets for language, right? Maybe you notice like, oh, he's going toward chips, or maybe you probably already know what food he likes in general, but you never know what he might start pointing to once he realizes, ooh, this pointing thing's really working out well for me. Mm -hmm. I like pointing, you know? So I think that's a good new pathway to kind of create in the brain. Using a reward that you know that he likes. You know that yes. he likes the cookies, so using that as a reward to try and promote the behavior of pointing. You continue with other things, with food and, and stuff like that. If whatever you want, we'll ask him to point. Yes. And then you give it to him, that's and, how it works. And you give it to him, yes. Yep. And then you're coming right over here, and if you think about the science behind it. <laughs>